the no i got blocked on spotify zampo and now i cannot listen to my music on spotify listen to my music on spotify sticky bunny went everywhere hey guys do i look good i look beautiful Welcome to the channel. I am Sticky Bunny Weird. Welcome to Life Like Bunny. Today, I'm making another video. If you've read the title, this video is all about my couch, couch, see, I still can't say culture shock. Maybe it's the fact that I'm slightly bit drunk, but we move, we're grown adults. Anyway, I am going to be talking about the culture shocks I experienced as a wee little girl moving to England. It was a tough time that happened centuries ago. I don't know whether guys you know what culture choke. I said culture choke again. I do not know whether you guys know what culture shocks are. Culture shocks are when someone moves to a place with different culture and they get shocked, <laughs> shocked. Like, and they get shocked by the culture in that place because it's like vastly different from what they're used to. And that's what legitimately happened to me. It typically happens with someone moving from one country to another because if you're in the same country, cultures are really similar whereby you're not going to be that shocked moving from Karamoja to Kampala. It's like a bit shocking, but not that of a big deal because there's still black people around you. If you're moving to a new country, like for example, me from Uganda, Kampala, moving to England, UK, London, you tend to notice a few things that are different and they tend to shock the living fucking hell out of you. By the way, this is not all of them, this is just some of them. Also, subscribe to the channel if you have not and you're new to the channel and also comment down your thoughts as the video goes on, like it, share it, all that good stuff to help me in the algorithm because that's good for me, helps me grow. And if you've experienced any of these culture shocks and you've moved to the UK, or if you're planning to move to the UK, please comment down below what thing you're eager to experience. I don't know if you're going to move in the next few days, next few months. And if you moved there, what culture shocks did you experience? Are they similar to the ones I experienced? Let me know. It'll be nice for us to kick you about it together. The first culture shock I remember first experiencing, apart from the fact that there was white people every fucking where around me, the first culture shock I experienced was the exchange rate. I was bamboozled because my dad would send us like some money. I already knew that he would send like some amount and it translated to like a way more Ugandan amount, but I did not know to what rate that was. One pound at the time when I had moved in 2012 was equating to 5,000 plus Ugandan shillings. Like, do you know how one pound is 5,000 Ugandan shillings? One pound in the UK can barely feed you for a day. But in Uganda, if you're good with money, 5,000 shillings can feed you and two people, three people if you're pushing it. That is the world like difference that like, it shocked me. So for a while, when I went into shops, I just couldn't grasp how much things cost. I was very confused. I did not know how expensive things were. Why am I buying town fast sticks for one pound? That's a whole ass meal. In fact, when I was a kid, I would take myself to lunch in this little tiny mini hotel, like restaurants. I would pay like 500 shillings. 500 shillings is 5,000 shillings, which is one pound. I don't know, pay 500 shillings or less to have a whole plate of food, but I'm paying literally whatever many times that for town fastings. And I was so confused. So I'm like, what? So I was so confused at how much things cost. I did not know whether this is expensive or this is cheap. And also Poundland fucked me up because why does Poundland have a big giant thing of tea for one pound, but you go to Sainsbury's and a thing of tea is 6.99 or something. Make it make sense. Exchange rate, that fucked me up a bit, but I got to grips to it. To now I only understand Liz's money. No longer Liz's money. It's gonna be Chelsea's money, ew. But fuck them all. But that's the only money I get. Do not give me your dollars. Do not give me your shillings. Give me pounds. Give me pounds. I manifest pounds. Pounds, pounds come to me. Pounds. <laughs> Listen to my music so I can have pounds. All jokes aside, when you go stop trying to translate every single thing into how much it would be in Ugandan money because you would have a heart attack. Just don't do it. 
Second thing I, I was shocked by is in the UK, they have some food. They have some fruits. Me, my siblings, like my brother, my sister and I were moving to meet my dad. We packed so much shit. We had about, I think 45 to 50 kilos each doubled in luggage. So each one of us had like a hundred kilos. So I had like 50 kilos twice. They had 50 kilos twice, 50 kilos twice. How much is that? We had about 300 kilos in luggage and we made sure we used every single one of that. Stuffed ourselves with my toke, stuffed ourselves with corn nuts, stuffed ourselves with peanuts, stuffed ourselves with fish, stuffed ourselves with uh, banana leaves, stuffed ourselves with jackfruit. Every single thing from Uganda we could think of because we thought this place only had, I don't know, ice cream. The only like white people food we could think of was ice cream. I was like, I don't know what they eat. Or oh, Irish potatoes. We didn't realize they would have food. So we like, get as much food and stock up because you ain't gonna have food. <laughs> and it was a huge bother because as soon as we arrived, my dad was like, oh fuck. The first thing he saw, he said when he saw our luggage was like, oh fuck. Because it was so much luggage, like barely fit into his car. And he had to go around distributing it to all his friends. They were very happy because they got Ugandan food for free. What the fuck was that? You go in Sainsbury's, they have cassava in some Sainsbury's and some Morrison's. Like they do have food in this country. If somebody had told us we would not have done that much luggage, perhaps, I don't know, some sh clothes or some shoes, something nice of some sort like that. That's like handmade some nice and pots and pans that would be much fucking better than all oh, the sheer amount of perishable perishable food we didn't think there is foods here you don't need to be over packing there's potatoes there's spaghetti there is cassava like if you find it there is afro shops there is indian shops that will sell everything you want don't be too pressed that is a culture shock that there was to some degree to cater to different types of ethnicities like if you really get into your culture groups of people or you google and you're good at it you can find the different little local shops to get what you need that's another culture shock you can find matoke you can find passion fruit in Sainsbury's readily available. That really shocked me. I sent my mom a video of me juicing passion fruits and she was like, Shamay, oh, they have passion fruits? I was like, yes, mom, they do. They do. Guess what? And I'm drinking it. And they were sweet, very sweet passion fruits. What other thing she was really stunned by was matoke. I sometimes go to the Afro shop with my husband and buy some matoke because I crave it. And I do some snaps because I feel so proud of myself because I got matoke. My mom just gets so flabbergasted because it looks so good. Follow me my food channel called delightfully delight you would love that shit it's on tiktok and instagram i post food videos and every food i eat please check that out let's go to the next culture shock guys if you relate to this let me know down below in the comment section next culture shock was on average in the uk there is less salt in things in school i would always go hungry because i found the food to be inedible but as a kid i didn't understand it's because it didn't have salt and they came from Uganda where we saw our food very 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 well because it's the only season we fucking have we don't use chili we barely use curry powders our food speaks for itself we salt so when I came here and they're serving me a curry but all I eat is like flavored water I would just leave the food there this tastes like us one time it was in the cafeteria in school I saw like the salt packets they rarely had them but for some reason that day they did and I took some because I was so fucking hungry that day bought some rice and curry from the school put a little bit of salt and I ate it I just like huh it's not too bad this is edible and that was my first time ever eating a curry and you know school curry it's not going to be the most delicious curry in the world but even with the little bit of salt added I was just like uh, I can kick with this so from then on my friends legit started knowing me as the salt girl because I would go around with little packets of salt to just add on to British food because I used to think the food just was bad but it's because I don't know it just has no seasoning I guess because you cannot say a potato is bad it's just a potato it needs seasoning this is just basically me saying UK food had no seasoning oh I just I've just come to the realization I guess that is a culture shock no seasoning I mean you gotta food has no seasoning as well we don't do spices but we do salt and a little bit of paprika eh no seasoning I think that's why I will leave it that's like explains itself everybody's like knows about UK food it's the point where they don't even put salt 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 I was starving because I needed salt. To me, if I don't like the test, I'm not forcing myself to eat. I'd rather fucking go hungry. 
comment down below if you relate. So, more of the story is, if you go to the UK or if you've been there for a while and you're struggling to eat food, salt will help. Just have a little salt shaker around to just add on to things. Might save you. Might save you from going hungry like I did. Let's go on to the next point. Stream my music. Next culture shock was the schooling system in the UK. The schooling system in the UK was so strange flabbergasting to me because first and foremost they make foreigners and people from other countries do English tests so they made my siblings have to do an English test so they can be taken on to either high school or college depending on what age however they were trying to make me do the same thing and I just straight up said no I told them I've been studying English since I've been four years fucking old anyone is fluent in that language if they've been speaking it from four years old you're not making me do this I just said no and they had to like just put me in school properly and I told them I did my in Uganda we call them primary seven exams which is like your big year seven exams in the UK if you relate and those make you go into like high school in the in Uganda which is S1 which would be year eight which is like you're in there bigger kids and i told them i did my um, exams i did really good and you're not going to make me come up as if i'm in inept i'm going into school what they did is they gave me a list of schools and told me to choose from whatever those schools were i chose one school but it was really filled so they gave me like a backup school which i went to and i ended up just staying to that because it's like who's gonna change schools like midway through no but even in that school everybody was so behind they were teaching them shit that we had learned let me just backtrack i went in it was around around year 10? Yeah, I went to the UK school in year 10 up to year 11. But the stuff they were teaching people in year 10 was things I had learned in year 6 in Uganda. Like quite frankly speaking, year 6 shit. And I was waiting to a point where they're going to be like, oh, this is us just summarizing. No, it wasn't summarizing. It was the real deal. And I was just so shocked. And I just had to like be like, okay, you know, like classes were very boring. I would just be like, I know what this is. We learned this. Imagine learning stuff you've already learned two years ahead. And I taught the teachers this and I was just like, yeah, we get it. African school system is great. We're ba it's bad here. We're underfunded. Yeah, I can tell. I can tell. Because what the fuck? One thing I was grateful for, they had psychology though. Psychology was entirely new to me and I enjoyed that subject. Potatoes, potatoes shocking thing is having to quiz foreigners and treating them as if they do not know english and asking them what is a cup or something that was a bit bizarre the next other thing was them being entirely quite behind with everything and i genuinely was so bored in class the only other thing apart from psychology as i said that was new was of mice and men that was just writing just shit and sexism so the school system was a bit weird i guess as it is a school system it was confusing up to now i still find it confusing i feel like everybody gets accelerated there no matter what their ability is as long as their age corresponds to what point they're supposed to be if you're supposed to be a year eight at 15 years old they'll put you in year eight at 15 years old they don't give a shit and that's quite weird because in Uganda, if you fail, you stay in that class forever. They won't accelerate you. They don't give a shit. You pay school fees. Just be aware of that. That's another thing. Stream my music. Ugh. It's 17 minutes and I do not want this video to be so long. So I will do one more. And if you want a part two, comment down below. I'll make one. So the other thing I'll say that goes without saying is the fucking racism, okay? There is bare racism in this country and questioning foreigners and their ability to speak English. It's like they won't be late in this country if they do not speak English in the first place. If it does not seem that good English to you, it's probably because their accent. But accent does not mean bad English. Most of the time people correspond someone accent to someone not being good at English. And that's not right and that happens a lot in england they put you through hopes to just prove you're intelligent that's really dumb i do not like that i'll make a part two further elaborating into that because it's a whole big thing quick last thing i'll say is people in england especially in london do not want to fucking talk to you do not fucking talk to people do not go out there being like you're right mate i don't care people in london no 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 do not talk to people they're busy they're going that you'll be out there having a seizure and they'll be like hmm yeah, and then move on because they've got a bus to catch so don't be surprised if you're dying and somebody walks past you it's because it's london do not be surprised if you've been renting an apartment and your neighbor never knocks on your door it's london nothing is weird in london everything goes basically and it's a culture shock not because i don't like that i actually like that mentality it's just that's not what happens in uganda and you're gonna be about always in your motherfucking business
so that's a big difference nobody's gonna be in your business as much i'm gonna wrap up the video now because i do not want this to be too long i'd rather make a part two but please listen to my music subscribe to the channel like this video if you enjoyed it comment down your thoughts about any culture shocks you faced in england or any other country or if you're english and you've come to uganda and you faced any culture shocks in uganda like even me moving back i faced culture shocks in uganda and i can make a video about it we can all hoot just let me know no, I think that's it. Follow me on Instagram, social media is everywhere in the link down below. Love you guys.